So today I'm going to be sharing my accepted art portfolio. So back in New York, I went on a school trip to visit various art schools. So I went to Parsons, Pratt, SVA, and Cooper Union. So when I went to those schools, obviously I got to tour the schools, but I also got portfolio reviews. So I would sit down with the rep and I would show them my work and they would give me feedback of what I should include in a portfolio, what I shouldn't include. Of these schools, the ones that I actually applied to was Pratt, which is in Brooklyn, and Kansas City Art Institute, which is in Kansas City, Missouri. For my in-state schools, for like supplementals and a part of my application was to apply, was to send in a portfolio because regardless of what school I applied to, I applied for the Fine Arts Program. So for Florida State University and University of Florida, I submitted an art portfolio as well. In a portfolio, they tell you to include 10 to 15 pieces. So it was a bit different every time for every school that I applied to or every school that I showed my work, but I'm just going to show you the ones that I for sure showed every time. I think something that's very important with your portfolio is the way you order it. So you have to start strong, start off with a really strong piece, and you have to end with a really strong piece. The piece that I started with is this one right here. I don't have it in person. It's framed somewhere in my house. Um, I just don't want to get off the frame, but I'll insert an image right here. So this is a monotype, and it shows various processes. So um, I don't know if people are familiar with printmaking. It's a type of art process where you have your a plate. It could be glass or it could be plastic and you kind of draw on an image um, and you put it through a press so you can print this image onto a sheet of paper. But anyway, so this is the I believe is a really strong piece. So I made sure to include that first. A lot of my pieces tend to be in around the same um, size range which I think is something I could work better on to have larger pieces. So if you have larger pieces, definitely include them because it shows that you know how to work with scale. You know how to work with various scales. For me, that's something that I don't necessarily have, so it's what I'm working on in the future. The next piece that I included in my portfolio is this one right here. So this is a mixed media collage. I included this because it's a part of a concentration that I had throughout high school because it is a reflection of a lot of my work, which is very colorful and very, um, I guess you could say textural. It just shows that I can continue an idea. So I, from that concentration, I included this piece, which is my second piece of my portfolio. And this piece, which continues with that same idea. So I do think it's very important to show variety in your work that you can do multiple things, but it is important to show that you can continue, um, that you can follow a continuous idea. So if you have any pieces from, I guess, a concentration that you've worked on for like AP portfolio or something um, that you are proud of, I would take the pieces that you're most proud of and put those in your portfolio. This next piece, I included it in my portfolio to show that I know how to do observational work. All three of these lemons are done from life observationally. And also I included it because it shows that I'm continuing with my idea of working on collaged backgrounds and stuff. So yeah, that's why I included this one. My next piece, I don't have it with me physically right now because it is framed but um, I'll put it right here. It is a still life um, acrylic done on cardboard. I included it just to show that, again, I know how to work observationally. I know how to paint glass. I know how to paint color. Um, yeah, just for the basics of having observational pieces in your portfolio. So this next piece, it is a block print here. Here's what it looks like. But this is not the one that I included in my portfolio. This is just for scale. I'll put the one that I included in my portfolio right here. But this next piece, it is a two layer block print, which again is printmaking. So it's, it's like a stamp that I carved out of um, linoleum or like a soft kind of rubbery thing. And so I carved out this stamp and I printed it. 
but the piece that I included in my portfolio is one that I printed on fabric and then I went back into and embroidered into it. So I included this piece, one, to show that I know how to work with printmaking, um, and two, to show that I know how to work with kind of textiles and fabrics and embroidering because that is something that I'm interested in to continue working in like fibrous textile art. And so that's why I included that one. And just for scale, it's this same size, but just on fabric. This next piece is a dry point, which again is printmaking. It's in the Intaglio family. Basically for those who don't know, I got a piece of plexiglass and I carved into it with like a needle, like a pointy, like a pointy thing. Um, and I rub ink into the crevices where I scratched and then I put it through a press to print that image onto my paper. So when I'm getting my portfolio reviewed in person, I like to show this one, which is just black and white, dramatic, selective wiping. And this one, which is the same print, but in color, because I did watercolor first on my plate and then I went back and printed again in the intaglio ink but for the sake of my portfolio i only included this one because you do have limited amount of space it because you do have limited amount of space in your portfolio but in person when i'm getting reviews i like to show both i like to include printmaking in my portfolio because not a lot of students have printmaking available at their schools and so to show that you know how to do printmaking kind of makes you sets you apart it's kind of something different also I do plan to um like whatever school I ended up going I wanted to major in fine art but have a specialization in printmaking so it's important for me to show that I at least have a foundation in it. okay this next piece in my portfolio um I think it's pretty interesting so it is a textile piece. It's completely embroidered. The entire thing is embroidered. Um, there are some patches sewn on. It's like completely hand embroidered, everything beaded. Yeah, I like to include this because again, I think it's something that is kind of different that I haven't seen a lot in other portfolios. And then it is something that I am proud of that I spent a lot of time working into. When you do have pieces like this that it's not, oh, what's the word? It's not an objective piece when it is more abstract. In the application, there is a description box where you can talk about what this is about or why, like your intentions behind it. And so I would definitely include that because obviously when someone looks at this for the first time, not everyone's gonna like it. Um, some people have told me it's too busy but that's kind of the point and that's where i explain why it is the way it is in that description box this next piece is just an observational piece done um from life of my uncle <laughs> so it's done in watercolor and colored pencil so i included that just to show that i know how to do portraits and i know how to work from life um yeah my next piece that i included is this um, so this, again, it's an abstract monotype. It's a type of printmaking where you put ink on a plate and put that plate through a press. So I included this to show that I know how to work abstractly. I like to work abstract to show my use of color, my knowledge of colors. Again, printmaking because it's what I want to focus on. These next three pieces were all a part of that portfolio. I'm very proud of them and so I wanted to include them because they are more personal than my other work. And so these are collages about my parents' immigration from the from Brazil to the United States. And so I included these in my portfolio so people can get more of a sense of who I am, um, what my work is about. I think this is a really good representation of what my work is about. Um, yeah. I embroidered all of this. There's a lot of textures, collage work again. That one was about my mother. This one is about my father. It is smaller. And this one is about myself. Oh my God, baby, baby Julia. So I included these three pieces to show 
like this continuation of an idea of um, talking about immigration, talking about personal experiences, talking about um, a simulation. So that's why I included those. Then the last piece of my portfolio, I'll put it right here, is another printmaking piece. It's a block print that I went back into and watercolored. So I sh I'm showing this. Um, yeah, I'm showing just this because it is something that I'm proud of. It is tips that I would have for making a portfolio or submitting a portfolio is to make sure you have variety in the work that you show in the mediums. So if you work with sculpture, include sculpture. If you like to work with acrylic, you just show the variety in things. Show acrylic, colored pencils, um, abstract work, objective work um observational work make sure you have observational work schools want to see that you have potential to learn and grow and so don't feel a lot of pressure to be perfect already because if you're perfect why would you go to school um so yeah i feel like a lot of people get very intimidated by the idea of applying to art school or just applying to schools in general just believe in yourself and don't have that like external um pressure on you but one thing i would say to steer away from is using pieces that are only like assignments in your art class like say you say your art teacher they assign something to you make sure you don't only include that work because sometimes you can tell when something is just for an assignment make sure you show work that you make on your free time or something that's personal to you because then your representatives can connect to you, your, the reps or the people viewing your work can connect better. And it's not such like copy and paste, if that makes sense. Because there are some assignments that like kind of everyone has to do like, oh, draw 10 hands and 10 feet. Now, I'm not saying to not include those because those are good to show observational work, but don't only include stuff like that. If you can go to our portfolio day, you should. Um, if you have that opportunity, like I said, the closest one to me is in Miami. The only thing that sucks about Portfolio Day is that you have to kind of know what schools you want to talk to because you will have to wait in a long line to talk to those schools. So kind of have a game plan. So if you know you want to talk to like A, B, and C, just make sure you're prepared to wait in a line um, to talk to those schools. Don't feel a lot of pressure for your portfolio to be perfect or if you do get feedback from a school, don't take it so personally. Don't let it knock you down. Just take it, just take everything with a grain of salt. Um, in the end, do what you think is best for you for your portfolio. Like, listen to what they say if you think it's beneficial for you. But in the end, if you don't think that's the direction you want your work to go, don't take their advice. I've gotten a portfolio review from Cooper Union where the lady hated everything I had. Like, she didn't she wasn't very kind to what I had to show her but then again those same pieces that I showed to another school they loved it and so everyone's opinions are different the way that your work is perceived is different to everyone and so don't let criticism like attack you personally don't let it stop you from making work. I think that's everything I have to say thank you very much I hope this helped someone um, if you have any questions please let me know you know and that's it Thank you for watching my video.